Hi, I'm Joe Connolly with a business owner who's become something of a symbol of the new ways that business owners are working as well. Tony DePazzo, founder of Metro Tech Services, is working now from an office in his apartment building in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, which is one of a growing number of companies that are opening up co-working spaces and office spaces in apartment buildings. Tony, welcome. How is that going? How's it going for you? Uh, for my workflows, it's working out quite well. Yeah, it's going to be hard to go back to the old way to do it. So what is the new way? Tell us how you operate now. Yeah, I would describe it as flex hybrid, kind of all the catch terms that you're hearing all the time. Uh, it really is a matter of being able to just post up wherever uh, wherever you need to. If you have a private conversation, maybe it's a sound booth type of arrangement. Maybe you need to do some printouts. Uh, but I think for me, the, the real catchword is flexibility hybrid. Yeah. And are those photos we just saw, photos of the co-working space in your building? Yeah, so that's, I think you had pictures of the first floor co-working space, but also on the ninth floor, there's two more co-working spaces. Essentially, these are old uh, party spaces, party rooms that uh, people acknowledge just weren't being used for obvious reasons for parties. So they were quickly converted and uh, yeah, people just started setting up in opposite corners, respectful of space, six feet distancing, that type of thing. I've never seen anything like that in an apartment yeah. building. So do you ever go out side? <laughs> starting to. Yeah, um, you know, the local coffee shops are starting to open up and for that reason, you know, grab a cup of coffee outside. But for the most part, I've got everything and it's, uh, it's been pretty eye-opening uh, just you know, if I want to work with a nice view, if I want buzz, depending on what type of, uh, you know, brain activity I've got going on. Yeah, there's something that fits the bill. And to have it all in the same, you know, building is, is uh, for me, a new experience. And it's going to be hard to move from here if I ever do. And where were you working before from? Combination of three spaces um, in Boston, uh, something called a makerspace, which is a, think of it as a co-working space when people need kind of tangible, the tools, the machining to build something. Um, artists, sculptors, electronics, roboticists, that type of thing. And then uh, uh, a more office-like structure. Um, I worked at a place called Work Bar in Cambridge, Somerville areas, and those are fantastic. And then around Williamsburg, I would just pop into the, whatever we work, kind of fit the bill. Um, you know, and I do have the ADHD going on. So for me, having a new space and kind of the buzz, the activity around, but not interrupting, it works for me. It works for my brain. Does the building charge for use? Is this uh, for tenants free use? There's one zone, the biggest zone that is uh, free for all tenants. And uh, the outdoor space is remarkable. It's fantastic. Uh, there's a large concrete table set up where people do regularly post up and do work. And then there are two spaces that are considered amenity spaces. And off the top of my head, it's something like $80 additional, which is, you know. A month. Not great, but yeah. Right. Yeah, producer, look at that. Conference room, conference phone set up. It's terrific. Here's producer Neil A. Caruso to join us in this. Neil? Thanks, Joe. And, yeah, you, know, you see the outside space right there. And, you know, Tony, I wonder, though, companies really want to have people back in the workplace. They want them back either full-time or hybrid. Um, when the pandemic subsides. So will this work from home and co-working actually last long term, in your opinion? In some form, yeah. It'll, it's going to be a piece of the puzzle. Uh, I think you've got to break it up into the near term, let's say like uh, 12 to 18 months. And then beyond that is a whole different picture. Who knows what's going to play out? But in the near term, I see this playing a, a big role in how people work from home, work outside of the office. I, I feel like it's all gonna be a giant puzzle that different organizations, enterprises kind of piece together. And then the individuals, the actual workers decide how they're gonna piece it together. Are companies downsizing now? Uh, yeah, it's a combination. So for my own uh, operations, it was a matter of like downsizing and I'd call it de-risking. And to me that meant converting people from full-time staff into contractors. Uh, I can see other organizations taking similar steps, but the, the underlying theme here is just to de-risk. Um, so we'll see what, I, I can foresee a whole bunch of different models, enterprises forming relationships with something like a WeWork or some kind of like office timeshare type of arrangement, maybe non-rollover five days a week or five days a month 
uh, in some space. Where, Got it. You know, certain teams. Tony, elaborate on de-risking. What what is what do you mean by that? By viruses, by future pandemics, or do you mean you know economic exposure as well? Yeah, in that sense, I meant the, the financial signing that long-term lease, uh, the huge capital outlay to you know design and uh, build out your office space. I, I think that um, people are thinking long and hard about that now. Uh, so the idea of kind of pushing off that risk onto someone. <laughs> Unfortunately, like a WeWork who wants to, uh, in some ways, is taking on that risk. Other enterprises right now, I think, uh, are really looking at that as a, as a good model for them in the near term. Tony, when you uh, made some employees contractors, how did that go over? Did you lose some employees? What happened? Where, where is that? Yeah, one moved to California. Uh, another actually decided to, in some ways, go into business for himself. So it's a little tricky. Who knows what's going to happen once you, in some ways, you deformalize the relationship. Um, and then the situation now is that now that I'm actually looking for folks, staff to go into the field, nobody really wants to. Everyone wants to work from home and, you know, who wouldn't? Did you burn the bridges, though, with the people who you made contractors or are they now contractors for you? They're now contractors for me. So we have that, we, we maintain that relationship. Uh, but I'll also say just, you know, projecting now that things are getting uh, a little hectic, uh, I do need to bring in full-time folks now. And so this is the next challenge. I, I Unfortunately, they're great, but I don't see them returning uh, as full-time. In other words, they've gotten spoiled and good for them. You know, some of them, have, I think they've both done well. See, but they're still keeping a relationship with you. Yeah, definitely didn't burn those bridges. Uh, good guys. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? What else are other uh, business owners who you know around Williamsburg, around Brooklyn? What are you hearing from them? How are they working? What, what's their situation now? Sure. Uh, so uh, as MetroTech, we take care of uh, maybe 90 different clients across different industries. So in the case of a life sciences startup in uh, Cambridge, they had just built out, they had just finished building out their office space when this took hold. And uh, essentially, they sent everyone home with their computers and a little mini budget. Hey, you know, go buy yourself the right kind of setup, uh, you know, the standing desks, whatever. So I see a lot of that uh, kind of the get yourself set up to work productively from home. Uh, everyone is moving to voice over IP because it allows you to bring your handset to your home plug it into your router and make and receive phone calls uh, from your regular handset. So there are little, you know, little adjustments here and there, but for the most part, uh, it hasn't been as, uh, as awful as they expected. How's I mean, business for Metro Tech? Uh, totally counterintuitive. Uh, a period that we thought would be really slow exploded and a uh, you know, period that we thought would explode uh, was a little more quiet than we thought. So unpredictable is it, it, like, unpredictable is how it's been. Do you, out of curiosity, Tony, do you frown upon workers working remotely, traveling while also on the job, if they have the flexibility to work anywhere? Is that okay to work anywhere? Do you really yeah. want them to be in the city they work in New York? A lot of people don't know how to do it right. Uh, so I am someone who's probably set up at a hundred different co-working spaces over time. And the one thing I know is that no matter how reliable they believe their internet is, it's going to go down when you need it most. And, you know, I travel with two light laptops. I travel with uh, a hotspot and I'm set up because I've seen every failure point, every pain point. And so the answer to your question is no, because most people don't know how to do it right. Technically, you mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What does Metro Tech do your business specifically? Sure. Uh, Lately, we've been enabling a lot of that work from anywhere, work from home, um, don't store data on your laptop, which you know can be lost or stolen, just uh, store it up in the cloud. And in that sense, it's accessible anywhere and you can work from anywhere. Your laptop is lost, stolen, broken. You're either buying another one, borrowing one and uh, able to access it. And again, you know, securely is the, is the assumption here. What's your background before Metro Tech? Were you a tech employee or did you have another business or what? I studied structural engineering at Cornell. I was stuck on a job, a public project for years, a private project for maybe six months to nine months and just got bored in one place at one time. So 
I got into tech because I was at the time the young guy who knew all the computer nerdy systems and then realized like I could just, you know, when the weather turned south in San Francisco, I would go someplace sunny and be able to pick up a, a good job within like days, not weeks, not months, but within days. So my background, yeah, started engineering and then shifted to IT and tech because it let me travel anywhere. I just have one other question. What was the, when you spoke about the cycles it being counterintuitive, what was the period when you thought business would take off and it didn't? And when were you expecting it to be slow and it did? Immediately after it hit, we were expecting a wave of phone calls, get us set up. But the approach was actually one of real caution and spend and uh, quickly kind of like tighten up those purse strings. Um, that was a bit of a surprise. Uh, and then what we're expecting now, so people are now, we would expect in well into this, uh, you know, recovery that people would kind of, kind of know where they stand, know where their budgets stand. Uh, and if anything, it's actually been a little, uh, a little more hectic. It's been a little hard to gauge, but uh, we are like many of our clients at that stage. We're ready to ramp up again. And business is good. Fortunately, yes. Yeah. That's great. Well, wow. one last for me, uh, and and then back to Joe. Where do you think you'll go from here, Tony? Are you following the latest trends of just going where the needs are, or do you have a plan of where tech may go to next in New York? Sure. Well, we deal primarily with the the life sciences and the the VC funds kind of behind them. Um, so, so what we're seeing is just the real like adoption of cloud, let's call it cloud compute, processing, networking, storage. And so if anything, that it's exactly what you're hearing. A lot of these trends are just getting accelerated. What's different now is the smaller operations, the micro operators who typically lagged many years, they just, they quickly got up to speed. So, so in other words, like we're just seeing like this, this tech just pushing through all different layers that typically were you have a lot slower adoption. That's kind of the micro. When I say micro, micropreneur, you know, one to two person shops, but it's just quickly washing over every single segment. And you're probably working more hours now than you used to. You're not, I assume, having to go up to Cambridge. You're not going out on jobs. Just doing everything there from Williamsburg, right? Oftentimes, yeah. And that's been terrific. Right? So much more productive, right? It's all the commute is just it's just a killer. It's that's the time waster, and uh, you know if you're stuck in a subway or in a car, it's not all that pleasant. So on the one side, yeah, I'm doing a lot of work from home, but just getting it's a lot more productive. Wow, that's great. Good for you, Tony. Great to meet you, and uh, maybe we'll call you when our tech breaks down. <laughs> <I'll be waiting. laughs> And we'll say he told us a year ago to have a hot spot or whatever it was. So we'll uh, <laughs> enjoy, enjoy Williamsburg. Good, good luck. Thanks, Neil. Bye. Bye.